Why would you actually want to use it? Uh, well, as I've said, um, it's very good for storing complex data structures. So if the data that you want to you want to maintain is the sort of thing that doesn't naturally fit into a um, you know a strict table-based uh, table structure, it's very good for that. And as well, if your data 
data records are variable. Uh, so if you're doing something like uh, storing email messages, say, and you've got lots of different headers, they're not all going to be the same, <coughs> some will be missing, it's, it's quite good for that. Data records as well in Couch are uh, denormalized. So to, a document will typically hold everything, you know, every item of data related to that document. It doesn't have the concept of joins as you would have in, in something like Postgres. And you can attach uh, attachments, you can store files within documents. Um, so for certain, full, certain problem domains, it's a very good, good fit. So if, if you're doing things like CMS or Knowledge Base or Wiki, those type of things, it's a very good fit. And um, person-to-person messaging applications, uh, like notifications, uh, error reporting, log logging, that sort of thing, it's very good for as well. So how do we use it for the <coughs> Obviously with it not being an SQL database, the, the traditional modules, DBI, DBI's class and so on, don't apply. Uh, there's an alternative module, CouchDB Client, uh, CacheDB client is a fairly thin wrapper on top of the, um, the, the CacheDB's own HTTP REST API. So, that's what it's uh, so for, first example, if you want to create a database, you start off by creating a new CacheDB client, giving it the URI of the database, so it's HTTP, so every record and um, view and uh, database is all referenced. Uh, create a new database, give it a name, has to be lowercase, uh, and then call create, and that will succeed or fail. Now you'll notice that I'm using try tiny, and I've put the create in there within a, a try catch block. Within, uh, if you're using CacheDB client, anything that fails will die and throw an exception. So you need to use something like try tiny to catch those exceptions yourself. So once we have a database, the next thing we want to do is insert document into it. And it's, this is a very uh, similar concept. We call new database with our, our name. We call new document. What I've got here, this is the data structure that I want to store. So I've got uh, three keys, type test and two, a couple of scalars and an array reference. So we can store literally any structure. And then again, we try to create it, or we'll catch the exception of the um, I don't know if you can see that very well on the uh, projector. I'm just pointing out a couple of um, uh, parameters that uh, you would pass when you create a new document. The first one here is the document ID. Within the database, every document that's stored has a globally unique identifier. Now, you can choose this yourself. Uh, you know, some people use things like UUIDs to, to guarantee uniqueness. Or if the data that you're storing has a natural identifier, so say if you were doing a, a wiki, the natural identifier would be the URL of each page. Or if you were storing uh, details about CPAN modules, the natural identifier would be the author's slash ID slash whatever path to the module. If you know they unique, those. Otherwise, we can use our needs. And the second parameter that I've uh, put some defined here is the uh, revision ID. With a, if you look at the database, you might have lots and lots of people putting documents in, editing documents, uh, doing updates, and so on. So internally, CacheDB keeps a revision for every document. And if you want to do an update, first of all retrieve the documents and it tells you, right, this is revision X. When you do an update, you say, I want to do an update to revision X. And if somebody's got in there before you and the, the, the current revision is higher, it won't let you do that update. And it will give you an error. So after inserting this document, we can see in the, uh, well, you probably can't see the text very small, but uh, trust me that in the CouchDB GUI, we can see here the data structure that we've put in, uh, the revision number that's been generated by the database, and uh, our document ID. <coughs> so now we've got stuff in, how do we get stuff out? Because that's 
really what you want a database for. And this is the bit where CaddyDB gets really, really interesting. Um, as I said before, no SQL. What you start with in the database is just a group of, of documents. Everything in a flat, flat structure. These get passed into what's called a map function. And this is a, a similar to like a stored procedure in SQL that you'll define yourself. A uh, map function is a small piece of JavaScript that is run on every single document in your database. Every document is the input to the map function, and the output from the map function is a set of key value pairs. These key value pairs are what you actually query. So you're querying this list here by the key. And the key and the value are totally up to you. They're whatever your map function decides to spit out. So if you're doing, say, a messaging system and you want to get some write a view for an inbox, your map function for that would take all the documents and output a key value pair for the key to address and value is the message subject. If you then wanted to do a, a view for a person's sent items box, we started off with exactly the same set of documents, but your map function there can output a key as the recipient, and the, uh, the, sorry, the key is the sender and the value is the recipient. And then we can query that by key to say, show me all messages to a certain person in your inbox, show me all messages from a certain person. So views are just pieces, small pieces of JavaScript, and I'll show you an example on the next slide. As I've said, it's a map functions are run on every single document in the database. You might think that has performance concerns, especially if you are running a full and complete database. But internally, what, what CacheDB does is it stores the output <coughs> and it builds a uh, B-tree structure of all of the, uh, the key value pairs output by your map function. So when you're en entering new documents into the database or updating existing documents, it's not running the whole thing again. It's just going to the relevant place in the tree and inserting a new item um, or, or adding a new one at the end. So is there any views at once you Yeah, so at, when you add a view, the first time you call that view, that's when it runs over all the documents. So that's an expensive operation. Once you've done it once, it's very, very quick. Uh, something that's interesting is that your uh, map function as well, it isn't restricted to outputting one key value pair per document. It can output none, it can output ten, whatever suitable for your application. So in, in your messaging system, if you've got, uh, say, a message with a CC field, there may be a array reference, you can output the key value pair for every entry in that, in that uh, CC list. Uh, indexing is automatic implicit. So to query this, we run the query against the view. So we're searching the key. And there are various uh, query types that can be run. Uh, an exact, so you say, right, give me where the key exactly matches this string. Uh, ranges or uh, multiples, that sort of thing. Uh, just to note, keys themselves, as with values, they don't have to be scales. They can be array references or any other data structure. So you can have, if you're querying by, say, a date range, uh, you can have your key as an array reference of year, month, day, and so on. And then query to say every 